Hello everyone, John Flynn here from Flynn Real Estate in the Niagara region. Uh, today, we're gonna get into the interest rate decision, which many of you may know, and the February stats for the Hamilton and Niagara housing market, which is pretty reflective of a lot of places in, in Ontario. All right, so so first off, the yeah the tiff macklem you know they raised the interest rates a quarter percent um the bank of canada rate so it went from you know 0.25 to 0.5 kind of expected but i just want to go into briefly the statement and the pretty much the two paragraphs that are the takeaway from from this so here we have it two important two important paragraphs and we made it clear to Canadians in January that with the economy recovering, what sorry, with the economy operating at capacity, our guarantee of rock bottom rates has ended. We need to, uh, sorry, we need higher interest rates to bring inflation sustainably back down and keep the economy in balance. Yeah, I agree. Um, yesterday, governing council took the decision to raise policy interest rates by 25 basis points to half a percentage. And we indicated that we expect interest rates will need to rise further. We also said that we'll be considering when to end the reinvestment phase of our large scale asset purchases and allow the bank's holdings of government Canada bonds to begin to shrink. This is a process known as quantitative tightening or QT the timing and pace of further increases in the policy rate and the start of QT will be guided by the bank's ongoing assessment of the economy and its commitment to achieving the 2% target. So this, of course, there's going to be ongoing rate hikes this year and they want, and, and their main target, it's not house prices, it's not whatever, it's to bring inflation to 2%, um, the target of 2%. And I just, the, the most important words, in my opinion, was quantitative tightening. You don't hear that. You've heard about quantitative easing, which means pumping money into the economy. Well, quantitative tightening means saving money or not pumping money and, and being frugal. And I can tell you right now, if the Bank of Canada is tightening, it's quantitative tightening, they probably expect most Canadians to do the same thing. So... Um, I, it'll be interesting to see how long it takes and how many interest rate hikes it takes to bring inflation down and to affect the real estate market. But uh, it's there's going to be a few. There's Some people have said four. Some people say more. I want to bring you to the next article. This is from a guy, Steve Saretsky. He's in BC. He's a realtor. Really smart guy. I watch him on YouTube, and he does a few different podcasts and whatnot. Um, he, he really stays involved in the markets, financial markets and real estate markets. He's a realtor. And here's, the, he called it the Volcker moment. And, and again, go to his website or you can look him up on YouTube and his name's here on this, on this screen. But what he talks about, uh, and you see on the first paragraph, uh, at, the, at the, the, the last line, Markets believe another five to seven rate hikes are still coming this year, and some are calling this the Volcker moment. So the Volcker moment, and he says what it is, it's, it's in the 1980s when the U.S. Federal Reserve, uh, the chairman or the head or whatever he was, uh, you know, rates went from 11 to 21 percent to fight inflation and, and whatever else. But they're calling this the Volcker moment. So we will see if, uh, and Steve's, Steve's, I would share the same similar views as Steve with you know unaffordable housing prices. I'm not a fan of this, as you guys know. Um, so we'll we'll see how we'll see how that plays out. But uh, follow him or look him up. Uh, he's a he's a good source. All right, let's get into the Niagara and Hamilton market. I'm going to start with just the Niagara stats because the, the way I pull these, it's easier to get them, um, or it's just it's the one part of the system only pulls Niagara, and then I'll get into the overall. But the market's still very hot. Um, it's patchy though. Certain certain houses do really well, and other ones you got to work at. Today I had a house in Grimsby. We had 12 offers on it. So um, again, this is today, March 7th, and so it's still very good. But we'll we'll get into what's going to happen in the future. All right. So the first stat here in um, in Niagara is the average sale price, which is the big one. 
So you can see here the, um, the average sale price just in Niagara, all sales, all residential sales, again, condos, detached, semi-detached, townhouses, everything, freehold, condos. Um, and I did, I did a three year on this one and you can see it did go up from, I'll get into the exact numbers it went up in, in, in the later on one. Um, but it's, you know, we, we did that big jump, that first big jump there is in uh, January and then February still rose, probably another 5% over January by the looks of it. Um, and you can just see the kind of historical three years where we're at very similar to last month, but it didn't keep going straight up. Um, all right, the next one here, these are the key stats to me. These are the ones that matter. Uh, number of sales. And, and of course, people think, oh, inventory, inventory. But you can see the number of sales uh, have been very strong even in 2021, right? Um, it's the sales have been, have been we had more sales in 2021 than we had in 2020. Now, of course, we did have the pandemic, but look at 2019. Uh, so inventory, not an issue. It, it, you can see the dips. These are all in the winter months. Uh, there was a double dip in 2020. That would have been March uh, when the, when the pan pandemic first started. Uh, but you can see the seasonal dips and both those two big dips near the end are, are you know, the winter months. Okay, and uh, this one I went back as long as as far as it would go it looks like what 2009 here and this is the average days on market kind of looks like interest rates if, if you ask me it keeps going down and down but of course 2017 was a very hot year in southern ontario and niagara especially and you can see the days on market went below 20 uh, and i tell people we're always around 60 right which was would have been even a little bit more than 60 two three months and you can look back there and it just keeps going down right now uh, depending on where you are, it could be as little as six days average on market, which is just unbelievable. And here we have months of supply. And again, this is the main indicator for the market and, and, and inventory, right? So um, we've, we're down to like, I think it was 0.6 of a month. So we're, we did creep back up from January. January had a very low inventory, very low supply. So we are going to creep back up and as spring comes, it'll go back up to one month or, you know, over a month. Um, you can see the lowest we've had before that was again, 2017, where we got down just below one month. Uh, but of course we beat that this year, just like every other stat. So supply obviously is still an issue, but it's winter, right? Supply is always an issue. And we'll, you'll see that a recurring theme in, in other stats. All right, here's the average list price to sale price how what what percentage are they getting right did they call it average percent of last list price but it's the sale price to the listing price and you know we're leading up to 2017 we were what 95 97 percent on average 2017 stellar year was up to what 106 percent almost and of course this year we're 114% on average, which is crazy again. Uh, we've never never seen that in this market and I, I don't know if we'll ever see it again after, but, but anyway, there's a stat, take that to the history books. Um, now I just wanna get into the, just a couple of stats from Hamilton Niagara because it's the real big one, right? That you saw on, on the title of this video, the, the big ones in there. Number of sales again. This is Hamilton and Niagara. I, it's it's just a bigger a bigger uh, sample size, and you can see how many like there's tons of, of of sales in here for the last ten years. So I went back ten years, and you can see all the dips. Right, this is seasonal. Summer, spring's high, winter's low. Right, and and every year there's not one year it's not the same. So right now, if you look at 2022, we're in a dip, and it's not as low. The number of sales are not as low as, uh, well, 2020 was low, but it's, um, we've had more sales now than 2017. Our low, our worst number of sales, we, again, inventory, because we had inventory, we'd have more sales, but, but we're still higher. So um, we're not at some dramatic lows. A lot of them are talking about supply and demand, but we've, look at the highs. Uh, so 2016, it's end of 2015, sorry, it would have been fall of 2015, it looks like. Just over 2,000 sales. 
and then we get up. To, and this is these are all months, right? But they they go by the with the lines. And then you get 2017. We peaked. We had high sales again, a little bit higher than 2015. Of course, 2018 when they, they what did they do? They increased interest rates. They're down, right? Sales are down, and then they slowly creep back up. We've had more sales in 2021 with supposed low inventory that everyone talks about. Now we do have a higher population, but look, we have higher sales. We're almost at 2,500 sales in one month uh, compared with just over 2,000 in, in the peak years prior to this. So again, I'm not saying inventory is not an issue, but you can't blame everything on inventory, um, like people, like the government, like whoever likes to do. I'm still a big believer that monetary policy and interest rates drives this market. Um, all right, here's the fun stuff. So this is, these are Hamilton and Niagara stats again. This is all residential sales, condos, freehold, whatever. And you can see the January, that was the big one. We went up, uh, was it 12 or 14, or 12% average, 14 medium, but this is average, so 12%. And now we're up uh, 17 from that same site. So from December, 2021 in two months, to the end of February, we're up 17% in the average sale price in Hamilton and Niagara. And again, the big one was January, but we still had another 5% added on in February. Um, you can see last year, last year we jumped in the beginning of the year. It was a good uh, end of the end of the winter. But then we leveled off. Look, there's some months it's it actually declines slowly in, in, in the summer months. Sometimes it does that. People are on vacation and whatnot. But it didn't jump, right? And then, of course, the end of the year, it, it jumps. Well, in, in the fall, it jumped, and then it really jumped again. So that's that's where we're at with, 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 with those. So the last one, this is the one where you can claim your millionaire status. I'm not saying that's a good thing. I don't think it is in the grand scheme, but you know, um, there's a lot of millionaires out there now with the average with the average house price. This is the average detached house, so just detached homes, and you can see there's 1,600 listings. So three quarters. The other one was 22,000. Let's let's pull the other one back up here again. So all home, all all sales, condos, and everything was 22,000 sales this one is 16,000 sales so this is like three quarters of the sales so this is not like some little small sample size this is a huge right detached homes are the biggest the biggest market so the average detached home in the Hamilton Niagara now if I just used Niagara it would have been like that's where I mainly serve but I did I did do a bunch of deals yes or yesterday sorry last year in Hamilton or Stony Creek so I do I do operate in that market so I wanted to include it the average one in Niagara was 920 or so 920 to 930 for detached but if you're including Hamilton our next door neighbor a million and 27,000 is the average house price Literally, it costs a million dollars to buy a house, a detached house. And most people want detached, right? Three quarters of the people want detached. It's up 30% year over year and all res, even if you look at the, all, the, the previous one, from February 2020, to, sorry, 2021, Feb one year later to February 2022, 30% increase year over year. And again, even with detached, it's the same as all other sales, all the residential sales. It's 17% in two months from December to February this year. So huge gains. Houses are literally million dollars. I used to tell people, I've been telling people over the winter, I said, your house is going to be a million dollars or it's not. It's going to be, it might decline if they raise interest rates. And that's the reality. You got to, you, you know, you got to remember. Not everybody. It doesn't always go up. Some people think it thinks it. And in this market, it's hard to believe it wouldn't. But once once the interest rates start to move, April's the next announcement. And again, unless there's un, some, some unforeseen, it's going to have to be like World War Three, literally, for them not to do that. Um, and I don't even know at that point if they would stop. But they have to do it. They have to quantitative tighten, and the homeowners are going to have to tighten too. And the market, the economy is going to have to tighten. This is not just the Bank of Canada and the interest rates. It's it's going to be 
you know we've we've been on a we've been on this this the spending spree right everybody we we consume you know twice as much as we used to and i've said this in past videos uh so it's time to tighten your belts and and with everything and and the bank of canada has to do it they have to they're they're going to show us the way right we listen to the government for everything else all these other rules and, and whatever mandates and whatever you want to most people do right uh, yeah, I, people who know me <laughs> some of them i do but uh but anyway so there's going to be some tightening from the government that's going to lead it and uh don't think that uh, the consumers are just going to still have a spending spree on their hands they're going to have to follow suit um and and they've said that too the they've said it too like it's 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 gonna there's gonna be more debt to, to service or, or higher servicing costs and uh and that's where where we're going um and i don't see i don't see how they're gonna back out this time like they did before there's just the inflation is just too high and look at these house prices too so anyway to all the millionaires congratulations um for being millionaires um or equity millionaires and um for anyone else that's looking to get into the market I'm sure things will turn around sooner or later. Hang in there. Watch your debt ratios. Um, I'm, I'm a real, you know, conservative when it comes to debt. I don't like debt. Um, no, I'm not saying debt's bad, but it's you got to watch it. And I would just say, yeah, be be careful with with the amount of mortgage you're getting into, especially first time buyers. Be very careful. Don't uh, don't jump in and, and if you're not ready, if you can't really uh, truly afford it. Anyway. Um, yeah thanks for watching as always uh please uh help me out it does help if you subscribe it keeps me motivated to keep making these videos subscribe like do whatever comment uh i appreciate all the comments that i get and uh the support uh people are pretty nice actually uh, i know youtube can be can be mean sometimes but they're they're pretty nice on on the housing market stuff so uh uh if you want to leave a, a disagreement I'm, I'm by all means I'm, I'm good with that too so um yeah again until uh, next week um i appreciate uh, you watching and uh, i'll see you then